UConn and Georgetown have a long history together in women's basketball, but a first today. The Huskies and Hoyas play at the Entertainment and Sports Arena in D.C., the home of the WNBA's Washington Mystics, and you'll see it live on SNY. And hi, everybody, from the nation's capital with Megan Kumo. I'm Alan Bestwick. Maria Marino joins us shortly. So UConn begins today starting a new streak after losing two games back-to-back -back for the first time in some 30 years. And a team that averages 78 points a game on offense for UConn in their last three Big East games have been in the low 60s or the low 50s. What are these opponents doing to stall the UConn offense? Well, they've, they're taking away transition, which is one thing, but they're really beefing up their defense. They've, teams have been incredibly physical, and they're taking away the one consistent three-point threat that UConn has right now, and that's Lou lopez Seneschal. Without her getting into that flow offensively, They've gotten a little bit stagnant, per particularly on that perimeter, and we've seen it time and time again where they just stand around on offense and they, they don't get into that nice flow. That's been a problem. And, of course, uh, Gino's addressed as well the lack of scoring from the bench players when they are able to come in, the short roster, and so on. So UConn needing to address all of that today against the Georgetown team that they were in a deep fight with when the two first met this season at XL Center on January 15th. Our starting lineups are presented by Subaru of New England. The familiar five for UConn take the floor again. Nika Mule, Lou Lopez, Seneschal, Aubrey Griffin, Aliyah Edwards, and Dorky Juhas. And for Georgetown, uh, the kind of polar opposite of UConn where injuries are concerned. They've had the same starting five for all but two games this season. And our keys to the game presented by Nissan. Huskies have had a lot of their offensive success with points in the paint. And uh, Aliyah Edwards and Dorky Yuha still need to do that again tonight. Yeah, and these two young ladies, they need to get involved offensively for UConn to have a good chance today. And we saw in the game at Marquette, those two did struggle. And when they struggle on offense, the team struggles as a whole. This is a beautiful complex in Southeast Washington, D.C., opened in 2018. It's, uh, I mentioned the home of the WNBA, Washington Mystics, the home of the G Leagues, Capital City Go-Go, -Go, and uh, of course the NBA is Washington Wizards do their training here also. James Howard, uh, in his sixth year heading the Georgetown program, his team with an improved record this year, they're right now ahead of in the standings where they were forecast to be in the preseason coaches poll. And the Hall of Famer Gino Oriema in his 38th year at UConn, seeking his 1,171st career victory as head coach against just 154 losses. One of the stories for UConn, the short roster that they have, they'll play with just eight available again tonight. Look at the average minutes for the starters. There are some 30-some minutes for the five starters. And uh, they'll need to do that again tonight in all likelihood. Yeah, well, what's the expression? There's no rest for the weary. They just got to keep playing. And, the, you know, these are the dog days of the season. February is always a grind, and even more so for a team that doesn't have much of a bench. So UConn in the national flag, blue road uniforms, and Georgetown in the home whites, and here we go. Seneschal defended quickly by Christina Moore. Here's Aliyah Edwards. She'll drive. Tried to feed it underneath the Juhas. Ball on the floor. That is going to be a tied-up ball. And it will go to Georgetown on the alternating possession arrow. So this is the 57th meeting between the Huskies and Hoyas. UConn leading the series all-time 50-6, to six, including the last 34 straight. Grace Ann Bennett, too strong, rebound by Jada Claude. Second chance for the Hoya. She'll throw a left-hander up over Aaliyah Edwards. Bennett gets the rebound and gets knocked to the floor. That'll be a foul on UConn. Impressive had Georgetown crashing the offensive boards. So when we talked to James Howard, the Georgetown head coach in the locker room about an hour ago, he told us that that game at XL Center January 15th gave his team confidence they can play with the Huskies. Well, they, they played them tight for three quarters. Here's Kelsey Ransom, leading scorer for Georgetown around the out. Yeah. 
Lopez Seneschal to Edwards. Too strong. Rebound by Kennedy Fauntleroy, the freshman sensation for Georgetown. Here's Bennett. Kick outside. That's more. Too strong. Lopez Seneschal for three. Back glass and iron and out. Georgetown doing an outstanding job getting defensive position and rebounding the ball, boxing out. More inside. Here's Claude on Edwards. Nice left hand spin up to the rim, but missed. Another rebound it's hard for Juhas. Yeah, no, great rebound by Juhas. That's a tough shot to defend. Juhas will get fouled trying to go to the rim. Important, you know, Juhas moves well without the basketball, with the basketball. She cuts hard. And she'll get free throws as a reward for it here. Foul on Grace Ann Bennett of Georgetown. Free throws were an especially important factor in the UConn win at XL Center in January. One of two there for Juhas in the first points of the ball game go UConn's way. UConn went to the free throw strike 26 times in that January game and made 22. That was the margin of victory, basically. There's Fauntleroy. Got it for three. Smooth stroke by Fauntleroy. Impressive freshman. But Georgetown takes the lead. That gets knocked away from Lopez Seneschal, but right to Juhas. Juhas for three. No. Ball tipped around, but the Hoyas end up with it. Going to be important for UConn to hit some of those outside shots. Well, if they don't, Georgetown can continue to pack it in the lane. Here's Bennett. Edwards got a hand on the ball. And then lost her player, yeah. That was a really smart cut by Claude. Jada Claude, the senior transfer from Moorhead State. 5-1 Georgetown. Going the way pass, but fortunately ends up in Griffin's hands. Juhas drives. No foul. Yukon foul on Mule. the effort for Diane yeah. to lose ball, but Absolutely. still the first foul on Nika Mule. So a six-point Georgetown lead early in this one. Here's Ransom, looking for space, kicks it out to Bennett. Got him off the glass for three. And that looked good at the minute it left her hand. Georgetown beaming with confidence right now. Three for three from the floor, two for two from outside for the Hoyers. Seven point lead. Edwards draws a double team, kicks the mule. Got the three. That's imperative for Nika Mule to knock down that three. That's the only way it will open up the inside for Juhas and Edwards. Four minutes almost into the game, first made field goal for UConn. There's Fauntleroy driving on Griffin, cut off. Bennett, cut off. Bennett blocked by Griffin. Ransom will run into Mule and get called for the foul. I thought that was a good call. She initiated the contact with her shoulder. I agree. Huskies trying to cut into a four-point Hoya lead. Well, the key is they've got to keep moving on offense. Griffin into Juhas. Got it, off glass. Good crisp ball movement and, and moving well without the ball will be key offensively. 
Two-point ball game. Here is Ransom. She'll find more. She'll let it fly. Get it and a foul. That's going to be the second on Lopez Seneschal. That's the worst thing that could happen for UConn for Lopez Seneschal to get her second foul. And what a tough shot. Nice pump fake and finish there by Moore while getting fouled. So the grad student from Sydney, Australia, transfer from Florida, adds the extra. And as we approach the midway point of quarter number one, it's a five-point Georgetown lead. Juhas. No. And a good rebound there by Moore for Georgetown. Bennett lets it go for two. No. Edwards with the rebound. Newell tries to push pace into a crowded paint area where Juhas couldn't pull it in. Fauntleroy. No. Lopez Seneschal gets the rebound. Here's Edwards. Drives, draws the contact, can't get the shot to drop. Jada Claude will get the Georgetown foul, and it leads us to the first media timeout, just past midway in quarter number one. Interesting start here in the nation's capital. Five-point Georgetown lead. Five-point Georgetown lead as we are past the midway point of quarter number one. First chance in game to check in with Maria Marino, who's under the UConn defensive basket. Well, Alan, a topic of conversation as of late has been how Lou Lopez Seneschal has been guarded and not just against South Carolina and Marquette, but throughout the season. And Lou tells me that she has gotten advice from someone else who's used to facing really aggressive defense, and that's Paige Beckers. The gist of the conversation was that Lou has to see it as a good thing and accept the physicality. She'd rather be guarded like that than not respected as a threat. She said it's not always easy, but she's more prepared for it she takes it as a challenge to have to find ways to score and it only feeds her competitive side all right maria thanks and uh, lou's gonna have to find a way to defend uh, a challenge as well as she's already got two fouls in this first quarter so Aliyah edwards will shoot free throws here for uconn out of the timeout During the timeout, the officials reviewed one of the Georgetown three-point shots, uh, said the evidence was inconclusive, so the three will stand. And one of two there for Edwards from the free throw strike. Georgetown red hot shooting to start this game. 57%, 67% from outside. And UConn showing a zone here. Well, Jenkins, 21 into the ball game. Quick movement around it. Ransom from the corner. No, and Edwards with nice position for the rebound. Good ball movement by Georgetown. They got the shot they wanted. Next UConn defensive possession. I'll ask you why they might be showing that zone early in this game. There's Lopez Seneschal. No. Juhas tried to get the rebound. It'll be out of bounds off of Juhas. So why would UConn be showing a zone early in a game like this? Well, first of all, you got to think about the, the fatigue factor like we've talked about, and they've got Lopez Seneschal with two fouls. So back in the zone, they're a little bit extended. you got Aubrey Griffin, the athlete up top, and they're communicating really well thus far. Kind of a step saver. Here is Ransom. Inside, Jenkins got away from that defense. Yeah, the defense collapsed. Good job by Georgetown to exploit it. Brianna Scott, 15 also into the ballgame for Georgetown. She was their leading scorer in the game at XL Center in January. There's Mule driving, kicking to Juhas. No. He looked flat coming off Dorka's hand. Body's on the floor. Juhas, though, makes an effort to get the ball. Mule feeds Griffin. Terrific hustle play by UConn. Broke a four-minute string of no field goals for the Huskies. Mule in a 
intercepts. The skip pass attempt. Griffin runs. Oh, nice vision. And Lopez Seneschal with the bucket. A rare fast break. Scoring opportunity for UConn. And Griffin felt the defender with her and found an open teammate. That was nice. Boy, lead is two. It's Farquharoy over the top of Newhouse for the freshman from Upper Marlboro, Maryland in the D.C. area. Inside of two minutes to go in this opening quarter here in D.C. Griffin into a double team. Newhouse who gets it stripped. Ransom blocked by Lopez Seneschal, but straight up, brave with two fouls. Well, she had to be careful. She can't pick up her third. Ball out of bounds off of Georgetown. It'll be UConn basketball with a minute 40 seconds to go in this opening quarter. Edwards will draw contact. As she backs into the lane, that will be Brianna Scott, who will pick up the foul for Georgetown, her first. Kind of reminiscent of that first quarter back in Hartford when Georgetown actually led UConn at the end of one. We're on the way to doing the same thing here tonight. Griffin stuck. Lopez Seneschal comes to get the ball. Shot clock at six. Lopez Seneschal blocked. Right to Griffin. Gets fouled as the shot clock was at one. That was a nasty block by Arendelle Jenkins. How about that swat? And to UConn's credit, they didn't give up on the play. And was, had the presence of mind to know where the shot clock was to get, get an attempt away in time. So Aubrey Griffin to the free throw stripe, an area where she has been particularly good for UConn lately. Richard Jr. from Ossetting, New York. 80% free throw shooter this year, but again, since the first of the year, really red hot from the strike. And gets that. Two point Georgetown lead as we hit the one minute to go mark in this opening quarter. That'll go out of bounds off Georgetown. That's a rare mishap by Kelsey Ransom. The junior has been so solid for Georgetown all season long, leading them in almost every statistical category. Edwards didn't get the shot, didn't get the foul. Juhas got the rebound. Griffin couldn't get the three. That's a great example of where UConn misses the likes of Caroline Deshaun. Easy flood, that three-point threat from the perimeter. Fauntleroy under, up and in. So quick and crafty getting to the rim. Not afraid to take it into traffic. 20 seconds to go, quarter number one. Hoya is led by as much as seven in this opening quarter. Five to shoot. Mule lets it fly, too strong. Griffin skies for the rebound. One second left in the quarter. She kicked it out instead to Lopez Seneschal, and time expired. Well, what a start for the home squad. If they get confidence from that January game in Hartford, they're showing it so far in this one. Georgetown by four at the end of one. Four-point lead for Georgetown over UConn as uh, we come to you live from the nation's capital. And by the way, uh, this news and note item from uh, Big East play today, Maddie Segrist for Villanova set the single game record for scoring in a Big East game with 50 wow. against Seton Hall today. Look at those numbers. And uh, 
Villanova picking up How the win. How about that? 20 of 26. Yeah. That's crazy. So the first quarter's been UConn's greatest strength this season, but in the two games against Georgetown this year, not so much. Not so much. Georgetown, you know, they've done a really good job coming out and, and being the aggressor, and that's one thing that Coach Jimmy Howard told us before the game. That's what they need to do. They need to come out, be aggressive, start hot. And his, he was worried about their defensive cohesion. Well, it has been spectacular. So we begin the second quarter with the ball in UConn's hands. Ayanna Patterson into the ball game for UConn. And Aubrey Griffin lets fly a three. No. Patterson with a rebound. Fights her way to a travel. Uh, Maria was in that last UConn huddle. What did they have to say, Maria? Well, Gino was pretty upset that his team gave up a couple layups to Georgetown and also that Georgetown had such an easy time getting to the basket. He said that ball screens have to be communicated. And then he also said he wants UConn to push the ball up the floor faster in transition. Ransom got a step on Griffin. Jada Claude defended by Lopez Seneschal. Now Ransom. No. And Patterson with a great rebound effort. Well, that's what she's going to have to do, just rebound. Aubrey Griffin! It just wouldn't fall, but she draws the foul. It'll be on Ransom and be her second. Not good for Georgetown to have Ransom, their best player, get her second foul. Talked about it a little bit before. Rare fast break opportunity for UConn. Good things happen for, to them when they can get the ball out in transition. So back to the free throw strike goes Henri Griffin. And that brought it around in, so Griffin makes both ends of that. Stoppage for substitution as Ransom will go to the bench with her two fouls. And Christina Moore will come back into the ballgame for Georgetown. So a two-point Hoya lead. Foul called inside. That's going to be on oh. Lopez Seneschal. That's three. So Lou will come out of the ball game, and Aaliyah Edwards will come back in after a brief spell on the bench. And Gino just said to her, come on, Lou, you got to be smarter than that. Georgetown inbounds with a 20-second shot clock. <laughs> Bank shot. <laughs> I don't think Claude planned on it, but she'll take it. Patterson has been very hesitant to shoot in her last several games for UConn. Better movement here offensively for UConn. Edwards cuts nicely fed and gets the roll. Touched almost every part of the rim and, <laughs> and finally decided to go down. Here's Jada Clark. Kicks outside to Liam Iris. Inside to Grace Ann Bennett, defended by Patterson. Terrific hands there by Patterson to knock the ball. And not foul. It's going to be out of bounds off of Nika Mule. No foul as she tried to take it to the rim. An aggressive take. Good hands. Good hands by Georgetown. You saw number 10. Hit it, but it went off a mule. Inside Moore, that'll be a foul this time on uh, Patterson. And the freshman will pick up her first. Georgetown doing a good job getting the ball in that low post. Kind, kind of an interesting intensity to this one. And uh, here is Christina Moore. 
transferred in from Florida. And with Diana Patterson in the game, I mentioned her kind of reluctance to shoot these last few games she's been in. No scoring from the UConn bench has been a subject of discussion with Gino. A huge problem. Yeah, it's a huge problem. And they're going to have to get some scoring out of Patterson right now, especially with Lopez Seneschal on the bench with three fouls. Three-point Georgetown lead. Juhas looks to tie. No. Patterson gets the rebound. Juhas runs into traffic. Does not get a foul call, but it'll be UConn basketball out of bounds. UConn lucky to, to maintain possession here. I don't know why Juhas didn't kick it out to the corner. Oliver Griffin was out in the corner and wide open. 15 to shoot. Mule takes it all the way to the rim. That one is blocked and knocked out of bounds. UConn basketball, six to shoot. Georgetown has such outstanding defense so far this half. Great hands, active hands. Everyone knows where the ball is. And a lot of intensity on the faces of the players, right? Real great focus. Juhas, got it, that's two. For Juhas' confidence, that shot needed to go in. She had missed quite a few. One point basketball game. You know, Juhas is two of seven. Farberoy missed, Patterson with a good box out. Here's Mule pushing pace. Edwards will get called for offensive foul. Let's see Mule's reaction to that. It's quite the skull. <laughs> no one does it better. <laughs> Here's Farberoy for Georgetown. Hanging on to a one-point lead. Now Claude, excuse me, that's Myricks. Here's Claude. Edwards with the quick hands. And got it to fall. Aaliyah Edwards with the steal and score. Timeout, Georgetown. Well, Aaliyah Edwards leading with energy and effort on this possession. The steal, 85 feet to the bucket at the other end. That's one smart dog. If he could drive that car around the court <laughs> like that, you think? <laughs> one point UConn lead here in the nation's capital. Almost brought to you by Yale New Haven Health. Now you see Aaliyah Edwards did a great job jumping in that passing lane and then one of the few fast break opportunities that we've seen just the second bucket they've gotten in transition but that, as we have seen throughout the course of many years their good defense turns into terrific offense for UConn so UConn with a uh, little 5-0 run forcing the Georgetown timeout and it is now a one-point Husky lead Aliyah Edwards trying to uh, impose her will and uh, lift her team up here in this second quarter. Well, they need her to. Two and a half minutes without a Georgetown field goal. With Jada Claude. Juhas quickly closed her out. Fauntleroy defended by Griffith. Boy, Fauntleroy's quick. It's just a reaching around, underhanded toss at the rim. But her first step is so explosive. Patterson kicks the mule. That's it. Got three. Uh, another critical factor. Nika Mule has to knock down open three-point shots. Two for three from outside in the ball game is Mule. There's Ransom over Patterson. No. And Mule with the rebound. 7-0 run for UConn here. They're going to call Juhas for a foul as she... No, not Juhas. They're going to call uh, Fauntleroy? Yes. Oh, okay. 
Okay, Georgetown foul on Fauntleroy. Maria, what you got? Hey, so Gino was emphatic in the huddle about defense. He said, don't stand outside the lane just because your guy doesn't have the ball. Stay in the lane so you can keep the ball out. And he added, we gotta help each other. All right. Let's see what kind of help they give each other here. As we come up on the midway point of this second quarter. Edwards over the top of the defender, Bennett. That's it. Keep it simple. Nice flash to the open spot in the middle of the lane. Just turn and shoot. UConn outscoring Georgetown by 10 in this second period. There's Ransom with the pull up. Off glass. She typically likes to go left, man. She went quick right. Nice double team in that low post. Patterson threw it away, trying to kick it out. Fauntleroy on Mule. Ran right into Mule. And then the ball goes out of bounds off Patterson. Not so, the prettiest stretch of basketball. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So important, these minutes for Ayanna Patterson. Griffin got a hand on the inbounds pass. Here comes Edwards. She'll take it all the way in. They'll call her for a travel. Yeah, she picked up her dribble a little too soon. A really good defense to make it difficult for them to inbound it. Yeah. Agree with that call. Yeah, I, I'm with you. It was One, two. Huh. Just awkward. Empty possession for Georgetown as UConn comes back the other way. We're going to turnover numbers there. In the game against Georgetown and Hartford, UConn had 23 turnovers. There's Patterson, her first shot in a while. Edwards will get fouled on the floor. It's going to be against Georgetown, I think. Christina Moore will get called for her first. See it in the bottom of the screen, 14. Uh, Amari DeBerry comes into the ball game for UConn now as Ayanna Patterson goes to the bench. Good minutes by Patterson. Four to go. DeBerry from the free throw line, no. Juhas, though, there for the rebound. And a bad pass and a steal. Here's Fauntleroy. Griffin comes back and makes her miss. Second chance points. Fauntleroy again. She'll get that one. That's two. Give Fauntleroy credit. But also Ransom kept that alive with the offensive rebound. It's going to be a foul call underneath as Juhas was tied up. It's going to be a second on Grace Ann Bennett for Georgetown. So UConn will inbound the ball with 22 to work with on the shot clock. That is uh, Ariel Jenkins coming back into the ball game as Bennett goes to the bench with her second foul. Gonna shoot it. Left alone. Drains the three. She wanted to shoot it the minute she caught it. Looked around to make sure she there wasn't did, something and she else. She said, "Why not?" So DeBerry on the board. <laughs> Jada Claude beats inside to Jenkins. Really good. Top. Really good defense by DeBerry. Straight up with the arms. Mule, double teamed, gets it out. Griffin, that's two. Aubrey Griffin with a bucket. You come getting into a little bit of a flow offensively. Edwards almost got another steal. Moore will let it fly. Too strong. Mule pushes pace for the Huskies. Now she'll slow it down a little bit.
Oh, she got away with the walk there. Edwards lost control, goes off her feet and out of bounds. Watch here, 42, Amari DeBerry. Good job, hands straight up. And that led to this on the very next possession. Foot on the line, it was only two. Griffin with a team leading eight points in the ball game for UConn. Kennedy Fauntleroy leads Georgetown at all scores in the game with nine. So two to go in the second quarter. Jenkins. Wow. Big bounce on the rebound, but Juhas was there. UConn six of their last eight from the floor. And a four away pass. The very trying to get it to Griffin. Ransom will run end to end. Those are the kinds of turnovers that Tiberi just can't commit. Edwards can't handle the pass, but it'll go out of bounds off of Georgetown and be UConn basketball. Gary Apple and Kara Walter standing by with the first half highlights and analysis on the UConn women's basketball halftime show. Coming up, presented by Duncan. Some sloppy play here by UConn passing the ball. Already the double figures on turnovers. Meg, 10 now for the Huskies before halftime. That is not good. Yule to you, Haas. Missed everything. Hit the backboard. So one minute to go, second quarter. Edwards saw a chance for another steal. Nice pass. Really From good Myricks. offense by Georgetown. Myricks to Jenkins for the bucket. To Scataway, New Jersey on the scoreboard here in D.C. Ariel Jenkins. 30 seconds to go. Georgetown wanted a travel call, didn't get it. Five to shoot. Juhas draws a triple team. It goes out of bounds off Georgetown. Three on the shot clock for UConn. An important possession here. They got three seconds. Kiberi lost the handle. Griffin won't get it off. So 16.8 now for the Hoyas. And he's saying, Amari, there's three seconds left. Just catch it and shoot it. Three turnovers in the last two and a half minutes of this quarter for UConn. Important defensive possession for UConn to see if they could stop Georgetown. And conversely, what did it do for Georgetown's confidence and momentum to knock something in here? Barbaroy missed the shot. It's going to go out of bounds and be UConn basketball with 1.4 to go in the quarter. The past half-court heave from Yule is well short. Well, after Georgetown outscored UConn by four in the first, the Huskies come back to outscore the Hoyas by seven in the second. And despite the little struggles down the last uh, two and a half minutes of that second quarter, uh, halftime score is UConn 31, Georgetown 28, as UConn looks to get back to its winning ways here in the nation's capital. Gino, after a grueling week for you guys, what do you think about the, the first half effort of your team? Well, defensively, I mean, it wasn't that bad. Um, a couple of silly mistakes, you know, and then you got a couple of turnovers there in the middle of the floor. Um, but, you know, it's our offense that worries me right now, you know. I mean, we just uh, are having such a hard time getting the shots that we want. And, um, you know, they're packing it in and making it real hard for us to throw the ball in the lane. And we're going to have to find a way to, you know, loosen them up. Nika's got to make a couple threes. Aubrey's got to make a couple. Dork has got to make a couple. Um, so, we're, you know, we're going to get them. But, 
you know, now we just got to knock them in. The yeah. defense has been pretty decent. It's been, it'll be good, too, having Lopez Seneschal back in that second half. Yeah, yeah, it will be. So, you know, that'll hopefully um, give us at least one more player on the perimeter that they have to come out and guard. All right, thanks, Jim. Yeah. Good luck. Our interview with Coach Oriema, presented by Duncan. So the first time ever UConn and Georgetown play here at the Entertainment and Sports Arena, and we've got a good one, a three-point game at halftime. Gary and Kara coming up next. Three-point UConn lead as the teams come back on the floor here at the Entertainment and Sports Arena in Washington, D.C. And with Megan Cuomo, I'm Alan Bestwick. Maria Marino rejoins us shortly. So the Huskies, after trailing in the first quarter, rallied back in the second to take the lead. What do you want to see from them in this third quarter to know that they've gotten Coach's message in the yeah, locker room? Well, and <laughs> what he said to us at, at halftime was offensively, you know, they got to knock down threes. They've got to continue. They got better in that second quarter. They moved without the ball a little bit better. They just, they can't stand around offensively. He was pleased with their defense, and I thought their defense was good in that first half. But they've got to continue that, up the intensity, and then just run the ball when they can, but execute and don't make dumb passes. Yeah, the turnovers again, rearing their head is a problem for uh, UConn. Let's check with Maria Marino. Thanks, Alan. I asked Georgetown coach James Howard how to keep this within reach, and he said, we got to come out, be disciplined on defense. We can't give them anything easy. Meet them in the path before they get to the spots where they're comfortable. Then we have to execute on the other end. All right, well, Coach Howard, Coach Oriama have had a chance to um, impart their messages, and we begin the third quarter with the Hoyas possessing the basketball. Grace Ann Bennett back into the ball game despite a couple of fouls. Here's Kelsey Ransom. Defended well by Edwards. On the switch, Fauntleroy. Step back. No. Good position by Juhas for the rebound. And the Huskies make some shots. Griffin drives, had it knocked out of her hands, picked it back up, and gets it knocked away again. You know, some of those plays are inexplicable. Kind of like, where are you going? Yeah, like, and, and get rid of it, pass the ball. There's Christina Moore, short shot, good effort by you, for the rebound. Edwards all alone in the paint, gets the bucket. Yeah, lack of communication defensively for Georgetown. Four of five from the floor for Aaliyah Edwards in this ball game. Kelsey Ransom, leading scorer for the Hoyas. Gets past Griffin, goes over the top of Juhas. That's going to go out of bounds off Georgetown. I like how Gino came out in the second half, just playing man-to-man, -man, half court man. Just get in your stance and play tough defense. We're with us earlier in the game, saw the Huskies flash a little zone defense at Georgetown. Lopez Seneschal, cool bounce there. Both sides of the rim and out. Now one of four for Lou in the game. That shot too strong from Jada Claude and Lopez Seneschal with the rebound. Smart positioning by Lopez Seneschal to get that rebound. Remember Lou playing with three fouls. There's Juhas. Got position on Ransom. Nice pass in two. Timeout, Georgetown. Yeah, they want to try to stop this little offensive burst by UConn. A four-nothing UConn run to start this third quarter. Has opened the lead up to seven. Early Georgetown timeout in this third quarter as UConn has opened up a seven-point lead. UConn has done a good job here in the second half. Nice look inside. Georgetown fell asleep defensively. UConn made them pay. And then look at this perfect pass from Lopez Seneschal to the outstretched hand away from the defense. And then you see those, those marks on Dorcas' shoulder cupping. To promote blood flow, and you, you can imagine how sore their muscles are. Yeah. I'm 
not very technical with the way I'm describing this, but it's called cupping and it's very, very popular these days. A lot of athletes, a lot of normal people do it. If you've ever had it done, you probably understand why. Yeah, it, I've had it, it's great. That was Jada Claude, too strong. And Edwards gets the rebound just before Juhas grabbed it. Now, something we saw in those two replays you were just analyzing there, Meg. Georgetown not collapsing so many people into the paint as they did earlier. Griffin couldn't hit the shot, but the ball falls Great to Edwards. Great position there by Edwards. Nice roll by Juhas. What a pass from Griffin. You know, when UConn gets the ball moving side to side, they get the shot they want. What we've seen so often of late is that they settle for the first open shot. Oh, Claude just ran into Ransom. And Edwards came up with the ball. Phenomenal hustle by Edwards. Griffin, nice job to avoid losing the ball to Fauntleroy. Lopez Seneschal gets blocked. And Edwards was wide open in the low post. Ransom. Nice defense by Mule to make her stop. Kicks it out to Fauntleroy. That's three. Boy, that changes it when you can knock down a three on the break. That is just so devastating to the defense. Now standing around. I was just kind of marveling at the fun little atmosphere inside the gym today. Eight to shoot. Lopez Seneschal, no, but Juhas has the rebound all to herself. Juhas has done a better job this half of getting second chances. It's a foul on Jada Claude, and she knew it was kind of silly. And we'll come out of the ball game in favor of Brianna Scott. I'm curious to look up how many of the Yukon's rebounds are offensive rebounds. They got 30 boards in the game already, right? Juhas already has 10 rebounds. Wow. And there's a steal. Fauntleroy will get a bucket, and suddenly, Kennedy Fauntleroy with five straight points for the Hoyas. And those are the turnovers that just drive Gino Oriama crazy. Edwards doesn't go. Juhas will find contact. So coach kind of um, in a different <laughs> place on the bench than his usual spot. He might want to go sit in the crowd right now. At the far end of the bench. I don't think I've ever seen him sit down there. Hmm. Ooh, pass almost kicked off. Juhas, got it to go. I believe that was a two. I never saw any official signal three, so I'll give it a two. Six point Husky lead again. Bennett fires it over the top into the Georgetown bench. Turnover to UConn. Really good defense there by UConn. They switched, they communicated well, and they disrupted Georgetown's flow. So that last bucket for Dorky Juhas gives her a double-double. 11 points, 10 rebounds on the game. Leading scorer, leading rebounder for the Huskies. Despite struggling from the floor early in the game. Mule will get called for travel. And that will take us to the media timeout, halfway through quarter number three. Dorka Juhas getting it done on both ends of the floor for the Huskies today in D.C. Here in Washington, D.C., it is a six-point Husky lead, and Dorka Juhas is leading the way for UConn today. Well, she's come on here in the second half. She's worked hard in that low post. A mismatch in there with Kelsey Ransom. And how about the pick and roll? Beautifully executed. And when you get out there, Dorka, she got credited with the two. Step back and make it be a three. Couple interesting numbers that Juhas has been a big factor in. Rebounds, UConn out, rebounding Georgetown 31 to nine. 
and they have 12 offensive rebounds in the game, leading to second chance points. And you see the double double again for and, Dorka. And Juhas is leading the way with four offensive rebounds. That is going to be Lopez Seneschal. Yes, it is. That's yes, fourth. fourth. A little foul in traffic, and Gino will get. Ayanna Patterson back up off the bench very quickly for UConn. Patterson played six minutes in the first half. Four rebounds for the freshman. No shots, no points. Brianna Scott, way too strong. Bennett with the rebound. Fondaroy buries the three. Second chance points for the Hoyers. The second game in a row, we see UConn's opponent. They truly believe. We saw it in Marquette, and we see it here tonight. Six-point UConn lead. Patterson almost got it stolen away on the pass from Juhas. Ten to shoot for UConn. Griffin stops and got the roll. Aubrey Griffin is going to have to become more offensive-minded here in the second half, especially with Lopez Seneschal on the bench with four fouls. Double figures for Griffin with 10. Scott, now Fontenot, defended by Patterson. Ransom, too strong on the three. Nice job rebounding by the Huskies. Griffin, they say a two. Yes, her foot was on the line. And that's what I alluded to before. Aubrey Griffin has to be more offensive minded and take charge. Good switch defensively by Patterson. There's Bennett. Now Ransom. Kicks to the outside for more. It won't go. Juhas with another rebound. And Mule stopped. Meantime, under the UConn basket, Aaliyah Edwards is down on the floor and holding her left ankle. I think, uh, hopefully, that's just a shoe repair. That turnover is another one that, obviously, that guy's not very happy about, but... <laughs> It, those are the plays that UConn has made at times that you just don't understand what they're thinking. They're not on the same page, for sure. And Griffin is going to get called for foul as she uh, kind of bowled over Ransom fighting for position. That'll be the first on Griffin. So a seven-point ball game. Two and a half to go in the third quarter. Man, bodies bouncing off each other, fighting for position on this inbound play. Nice pass in, and Jenkins missed the shot. That's too bad, because Jenkins did all the work to get herself into great position. Patterson, nice kick to you, Haas. Got the shot. That's a two. That's another lost opportunity. UConn has, they've, they've gotten twos when they should have gotten three. Did they just call Leah Edwards for a foul? They just called a... Yeah, they called Leah Edwards for a foul there. Her second. It's physical in that lane. Third foul? Third foul on Edwards. Wow. And another call down low. Patterson. So this is a previous play. Dorka shoots the ball. On the right side, you see Edwards pushed her. Well, I'm, I'm going to tell you, there, there's much pushing and shoving and bodies bouncing off each other as is going on at both ends of the floor? It, it, this is the stuff that, you know, she did walk uh, before she dribbled. 
you know, but it's the inconsistency in the way the games are called, which is frustrating for for both teams, both coaches. So the turnover by Georgetown gives UConn a chance to build on this nine-point lead. Under two to go, quarter three. Mule, yes, for three. You know, Gina said it to us at halftime, and Georgetown wanted to call another timeout to slow UConn down, but Nika Mule changes the game, knocking down threes. A 9-0 UConn run. Huskies outscoring Georgetown by nine in this third quarter, and Nika Mule has had it going on from outside today. Well, I mean, this is what they need. No one guarded her, and she decided, why not? I'm going to launch it. Three of four from long range for Nika Mule, and it's exactly what UConn needs, especially with Lopez Seneschal out of the game with four fouls. And there'll be an offensive foul called on Georgetown. It's obviously that getting, was on too Ariel chippy. Jenkins, yeah. getting too chippy in the lane. As you can see from the background of that shot, we're on the opposite side of the court that we normally are today. As Nika Mule gets fouled, taking it to the rim. Yeah, everything so about right. this has been yeah. very you're, different. You're looking at the game from over there. We're seeing it backwards on our monitors. The coaches are up in front of us, but it's kind of an interesting perspective on this we're side, isn't it? We're sitting on opposite sides of each other than yeah. we usually do. It's all backwards today. We're making it work. We got all kinds of things going on here. <laughs> Good save by Patterson. Mule's left shoe is untied. She just realized it. Griffin. Four, two. That's a two. And Nick is trying to get the official's attention to t that she needs to tie your shoe. And he said, sorry, I can't stop the play. Only well, we got a minute to go in the quarter. Ransom. She's been quiet. Too strong. Patterson had her back to the ball and then spun around and found it right there. Here's Aaliyah Edwards. Quick step into the lane. Gets it knocked out of the way and it is going to go out of bounds. Next UConn game on SNY is this Wednesday night from Gamble Pavilion. It doesn't get any easier, the road for the Huskies. Creighton comes to town. Our coverage starts with the pregame show at 6.30 p.m. Wednesday night on SNY. So 30 seconds to go in this third quarter. Huskies on an 11-0 run over the last three and a half minutes. Bennett finds Fauntleroy, who draws Juhas's attention. They try to get it in to Bennett, and the pass is wide. Spectacular defense by Aubrey Griffin. Coming around on that high side, using her feet, hand in the passing lane. So 13.8 to go for the Huskies. Five. Griffin, no, at the buzzer. Well, excellent third quarter for UConn fans, and the Huskies stretch their lead. It is a 14-point advantage, their largest of the ballgame after three. Time for the fourth quarter, and our game reset is presented by your local New England Honda dealers. UConn leading Georgetown, 50-36. Dorky Juhas with a double-double, and Aubrey Griffin. And there was one point you said, I think, early in that third quarter, Meg, that she needed to take over the game. Well, she uh, did pretty well in quarter number three. It just makes such a difference for this Husky team when Griffin is knocking down shots. The great triple penetration, pull up at the foul line. And then her smooth stroke, her much improved long-range shooting has made such a difference for this team. Aubrey was uh, three of five in the third quarter. 
and had six of her 14 points just in that third quarter alone. And, you know, I was looking at the stat sheet. She's 0 for 1 from three-point range, but she's those long-range shots that she knocked in were twos, and she was just inches. Right. In front of the line, you gotta just get behind that three-point line, get yourself three. She's five of 10 from the floor. Huskies out rebounding the Hoyas 35-10. Mule strong to the rim, gets a foul. Nika Mule, another one to uh, to emphasize on the day her performance. She's taken five shots, four of them from outside, and made three of them. Nine points for Mule. That is going to be uh, the foul on Kalia Myrex, and here is Mule at the free throw line for UConn. That's the third missed free throw of the game for the Huskies. So Mule into double figures in scoring for the third time in the last four games. Lana Patterson defending Grace Ann Bennett. There's Brown a Scott. Three misses. Bennett gets the rebound. Feeds inside and a bucket and a foul. What a for finish Scott. there by Scott. Good pass from Bennett. Getting bumped, falling down. Yeah, you should be fired up. Foul was on Ayanna Patterson, her third. So this is Brianna Scott, sophomore from Reston, Virginia, who in the January game at XL was the only Georgetown player in double figures. Also had a team high in rebounds that game. Adds the extra there. Georgetown looking to apply a little high trap. And gets a result. Fauntleroy with the steal and score. Well, Anika did exactly what you're not supposed to do. Dribble across half court, right into the trap, pick up your dribble, and that's where you steal the ball out of the trap. You steal the pass. So Georgetown trying to get UConn scrambled. Got to go out of bounds off to Hoyas and the UConn's basketball. So Lula Pesetashaw will quickly be gotten up off the bench by Gino and come back into the ball game for Ayanna Patterson. Lou playing with four fouls here early in this fourth quarter. And this is where the, the graduate student has got to be smart. Ten to shoot. Edwards drives, kicks it. Griffin, no. Juhas with another offensive board and gets fouled. The offensive rebounds have been incredible for UConn in the second half. It's going to be the 13th offensive board of the game for the Huskies. She did the work as the shot went up. Really good positioning by Juhas. Third foul on Grace Ann Bennett and Dorka double double Juhas is at the free throw line. Literally, the grad student averaging a double-double this season. 14 points and 10 rebounds a game, her season-long average. One of two there. There's Scott. No. And the ball goes right to Mule for the UConn possession. Timeout. UConn. Gino steps out, calls a timeout. Wants to talk it over with his team. Back in D.C., a look at Caroline Ducharme on the UConn bench. Has missed now the last 12 games in concussion protocol. And um, when Gino's asked about her potential availability a week ago, he said, well, maybe this week against... Uh, Mark Henner, Georgetown, and then uh, he said in Caroline's words, yeah. I'm getting close, but she will not play today. And so the shorthanded Huskies who certainly could use the reinforcements. Yeah, they, they, there's so much, you know, other than her, her three-point shooting, you know, she just makes things happen. Yeah. Juhas through the double team. What an effort from Dorka. Terrific, strong move by Juhas. 
Juhas leading the Huskies in scoring in this one. And a turnover. Nice job by Juhas stepping in front and stealing that pass. 16 points, 13 rebounds for Dorka. Newell puts the ball on the floor. Waits she for called Edwards. for that screen, too. Missed it. Griffin not boxed out. Second chance points opportunity here for UConn. Offensive boards have been a thing of beauty today if you're a Connecticut fan. Lopez Seneschal, nice. And gets the foul. I tell you, she's been quiet offensively due to her foul trouble, but makes some noise with this play. Just her second main field goal of the day for Lopez Seneschal. Two of seven. And uh, goes to the free throw line here. Just 18 minutes played compared to 33 from Yule and 33 for Juhas and Griffin. Hey, as much as she welcomes the break, <laughs> she doesn't want to sit. No. And certainly credit to Ayanna Patterson for uh, 12 minutes, five rebounds in this one in trying to spell the, uh, the foul trouble for, for Lou. Here's Kelsey Ransom. Now Kennedy Fauntleroy, boy, what a shooting touch she has, huh? She has been very difficult to stop here this evening. So here's that pressure again by Georgetown, trying to trap. Better job by UConn in, in breaking that pressure. Ten to shoot. Griffin drives all the way in, and he's going to draw some contact. It will be Kelsey Ransom who will pick up her third foul. I think she thought maybe she was in position to draw the offensive foul, but the old charge block thing, that's her fourth now? Mm. Yeah, fourth. I missed one on the sheet somewhere. Here's Griffin. And Regino's been happy with their defense today. They've done it. And an outstanding job on Kelsey Ransom. She's only got four. And the kid leads Georgetown in almost every statistical category, including scoring. She scores 13 a game. Very limited in her offensive output today by this UConn defense. Aubrey Griffin, meanwhile, perfect from the free throw line. Again today for UConn, six for six. Clawed into the paint to Bennett, who tries to work on Juhas. Gets the bucket and the foul. Uh, this, Bennett has played really well in this game, particularly on the offensive end. Nice square up, dribble, come back. Left-handed hook. That was outstanding. So the senior from Lake George, New York, steps to the free throw line, team captain. Adds the extra, has started almost every game for four years at Georgetown. Here's that pressure again by the Hoya defense. Six minutes to go, quarter number four here in D.C. You're looking for help, gets it from Lopez Seneschal. Season opening, missed. It was a really good take, too. Just couldn't get it to drop. Fauntleroy for three. 24 points for the freshman Kennedy Fauntleroy. Her career high is 28. Ewell in trouble. Looking for help. Gets it. Georgetown, a 6-0 run. 10-point ball game. UConn lead. Goes through the hands of Aaliyah Edwards. You know, we saw that at Marquette, just getting a little too ahead of themselves. Then it missed. Almost the 
If that was from outside the three-point arc, that was just the fifth three-point attempt of the year for Bennett. And a timeout UConn as Gino wants to settle things down. Well, that, I don't know if that was the ideal shot that Georgetown wanted. But they're on a 6-0 run, and they made this a 10-point ball game, and there's still uh, a lot of time to go with uh, just under five minutes to go. Good time out here by Gino. Draw up a play, execute it, and try to get the shot they want. And I, I suspect reinforcing and enforcing again how to handle that Georgetown trap and the pressure. Absolutely, and how about continue to offensive rebound? Kelsey Ransom held in check by the UConn defense. But she's such a dangerous player that you can't take your eye off her for a minute. And on the other hand, Kempe Fauntleroy, who averages 11 a game, has got 24 today. Yeah, you may want to guard her. <laughs> Timeout. See what the Huskies draw up. Lopez Seneschal wide. And the rebound goes uh, to Moore. Nice yeah, box out. Terrific box out by Christina Moore. So can Georgetown keep the run going here and continue to put that scoreboard pressure on the Huskies? Ransom gets the screen from Bennett. Drives. Swatted away. Nice switch. Good defense by Juhas. Six four in long arms. Fourteen to shoot for the Hoyas to inbound here. Inside the claw. And they're gonna call a foul on Griffin. That'll be her second. We heard Gino, Aubrey, get around her. Don't stand there behind her. So a 20-second shot clock for Georgetown to work with here as they inbound. Mule winds up on the floor, and the pass winds up in the hands of Aaliyah Edwards. Mule is down, holding her left ankle behind the play. And it's going to be out of bounds, and Mule is down. She's had a problem with that ankle. And she's the toughest kid. So for her to be wincing like that, it, that's not good. Athletic trainer Janelle Francisco is out with Mule. And her way of dealing with it is just tighten her shoe. Ooh, oh, right there. you saw Ooh. her go over. And you can see she's got reinforcements, those ankle braces. She got knocked off balance a bit. Oh, got tangled up with Juhas. And uh, Nika comes up very gingerly and trying to walk it off. And Gino has talked many, many times about her leadership and the spark and the energy she brings to this team. This would be a costly loss if she misses any kind of significant time for UConn, even in this ballgame. She, she, we've talked about this so much. She's not only the heart and soul, she's the grit, she's the toughness. The and junkyard dog, which Doug Bruno, the DePaul coach, calls her. She does everything for this team. And the primary ball handler, which with this Georgetown defensive pressure, that'll be something to watch here. So Amari DeBerry comes into the ball game for Mule. Four minutes to go here in the nation's capital. UConn leading the Hoyas by 10. Edwards in traffic, has it knocked away, gets it back. Has four white jerseys around her. Five to shoot, Juhas will get fouled and just doesn't get the bank. The Georgetown bench is irate. Jimmy Howard wanted a walk call.
So that was the fourth on Grace Ann Bennett. And so we watched Nika Mule try and rewrap that support. See if she can test it out. The thing is so tight, there's got to be zero circulation. You know, if there's any way she can, she will. Two good free throws from Dorka Juhas. Coming back to the scorer's table is Nika she'll, Mule. She'll sub herself back in. There's Bennett from the corner for three. Players are not going away. Here's the pressure. Lopez Seneshaw will travel. Is Lopez Seneschal, I believe, he the coach is addressing. Well, he, Lopez Seneschal with the turnover, Gino was not happy with that. You don't expect your graduate student, you know, fifth year player, to have that kind of a turnover. But worse, Aaliyah Edwards, Aaliyah Edwards slow to get twisted up. her right ankle in a collision with somebody. And just got up off the floor after retying the shoe. So Mule back into the ball game. Edwards is up. Has adjusted the footwear. And we have three minutes and 27 seconds to go in this ball game that UConn leads now by nine. It's a very precarious nine. Gotta say, fun atmosphere. It's awesome. First time Huskies and Hoyas play here at the home of the Washington Mystics in the WNBA. Ransom. And that will be a travel. Watch so Aaliyah Edwards look here. Look for Aaliyah Edwards on the right side of the screen. The collision. And she immediately grabbed that right ankle. Mule just forces her way across the timeline. And Griffin saves the steal. And another that'll be out of bounds off Georgetown. UConn is so lucky to maintain possession here. The, the passes that they make literally blow your mind. Too much air, too slow, too much time. They pick up their dribble, they leave their feet, they lob it. And miraculously, they still have possession. Shot clock now at seven. Edwards will drive, lose control, turnover. 21st turnover of the ball game for UConn. Edwards has struggled with her handle of late. The Marquette game, she struggled with the ball. Same thing here. Can Georgetown cut into the nine-point deficit on this possession? Here's Moore driving. And gets the fifth foul on Lopez Seneschal. Smart take. Really good decision by Moore. So Lou Lopez Seneschal will go to the bench. And it will be an Eshbet court who will come into the ball game in these pressure final two minutes and 40 seconds in place of Lopez Seneschal. So Christina Moore trying to keep the pressure on UConn from the free throw stripe. The Australian transfer from Florida. Got him. So the pressure from the Georgetown defense. Can the Huskies handle it? Will burn some clock. Mule just got away with a foul. Six to shoot. Edwards. They're going to call an offensive foul there on, on Edwards. Edwards. Wow. That mystifies me. Sorry, but that does. Let's 
see, she gets the ball. Wow. <laughs> That's a good reaction. I think I've seen it all. Aubrey uh, Griffin and her athleticism in the right place at the right time. Floating in the air. 17 to shoot, two minutes to go in the ball game. Bennett, over the top of Juhas for two. I'll tell you what, Bennett is playing with so much confidence. He's a 6'3 senior. Five point game, four away pass. And a whistle and a foul on Georgetown. It's interesting. I thought she led with her left elbow here, this previous bucket. No call, but she did just foul out. Grace Ann Bennett with that collision at half court with Aaliyah Edwards. So Bennett to the bench with five fouls. Brianna Scott comes back in. A minute 48 to go. Five-point UConn lead. Georgetown on a 7-0 run in the last uh, little less than two minutes. And Bennett has played really well of late. That's a, a blow to Georgetown in this offensive run. Leah Edwards, good with the first. Fifteen of nineteen from the free throw strike today for the Huskies. There's Ransom. Now Scott. Fondleroy lets it fly. That's two, doesn't go. Fight for the rebound. And Georgetown gets it. Here's Jada. Claude, now the Moore, now back to Fondleroy. Ten to shoot. Fondleroy drives on Edwards over the top. Claude with the rebound. It goes. Well, the problem, too, not only did UConn give him a couple looks there, but now they can, after the bucket, they get into full court pressure. Five point. Betancourt gets the timeline clear. And the timeout called by UConn. And a five-point ball game with less than a minute to go. Gary Apple and Kara Walters coming up with a full recap of tonight's game. Plus, you'll get to hear Gino Auriemma's post-game news conference. It's the UConn Women's Basketball post-game show presented by your local New England Honda dealers immediately after the ball game. Wow. It's exciting. Full credit to Georgetown, who after co coming out of the locker room at halftime, Got pushed around a little bit by UConn in the third quarter. They've outscored the Huskies 22 to 13 in the fourth. And that is the highest scoring quarter by either team in this ball game, and we're not done yet. So if you're UConn, you got less than a minute to go, 18 on the shot clock. Lose out. Lopez Seneschal fouled out of the ball game. What are you looking for? You know what? I think you got to space, get good spacing. I like to put the ball in Aubrey Griffin's hand, letting her penetrate, get it to Aaliyah Edwards in that low post or in the high post. But just take care of the basketball for sure. Well, no matter which color blue you're wearing today here, uh, fans are having some fun, making some noise. And we are down to the final minute of another good one for UConn. Who will inbound with 18 to shoot. Nash Betancourt with the ball. Through three Georgetown defenders. Nice job. 10 to shoot. Betancourt will turn it over with a travel. Twenty-third turnover of the game by UConn. They can't give up a three. 
five point ball game, Sean. And obviously, Georgetown is going to look for a three. Look for Fauntleroy. She's been hot. 30 seconds to go. Foul inside on Mule. Who will get called for a hold. And there's Lopez Seneschal on the bench after falling out of the ball game. Picked up some early ones. Played with four in the fourth and eventually fouled out. So Kelsey Ransom, the junior from South River, New Jersey, will step to the free throw line for Georgetown. Hoya six of seven from the strike today. That one missed. Look at the numbers for Fauntleroy. Timeout called by UConn to, I believe, advance the ball. 28.7 to go. Kennedy Fauntleroy from Upper Marlboro, Maryland, here in the D.C. area. Five times this season, a Big East Freshman of the Week. In the last couple of games, she struggled to score. Well, not today oh, against boy. the Huskies. She has been the star of the show for, for Georgetown. And, you know, I don't think she's touched it enough offensively the last several possessions, the last couple minutes for Georgetown. But she has played outstanding basketball here today. Started all but one game, played 30 minutes or more in almost every game this season. And for Jimmy Howard's team, has led the way in this one. Yeah, for she UConn. hasn't come off the floor. For, for UConn now, the timeout right after the uh, the made free throw means they'll be able to advance the ball and eliminate that uh, that Georgetown press, but that's UConn's last timeout. They've got to get the ball in and not turn it over. Now only 28.7 seconds to go in the ball game, but no timeouts remaining for the Huskies. Edwards will get it and will get fouled. Christina Moore will commit the foul. Just her second. And UConn, both teams in the bonus, so Leah Edwards will step to the free throw line as Kalia Myricks comes out of the ball game for Georgetown and Brianna Scott goes in. That's a little offense for defense substitution for Coach Howard. So here's Edwards. Huskies lead by four. Now five. Free throws have been critical for the Huskies here today. Thirteen in the ball game for Edwards. Timeout, Georgetown. Let's talk more about Kennedy Fauntleroy and her impact on this game today. Look at how, how smartly got back. Just trying to get behind the line. Did it from the defensive end as well. Stepping in, picking off that pass. She shoots well off the dribble as well. 24 points, 10 of 16 from the floor, 4 of 5 from outside, 6 rebounds, and just 2 turnovers for the freshman. Now on the UConn side, 27.7 to go and a six-point lead. Georgetown six for 21 from three today. That's what you're looking for for UConn? Defensively? Yeah, I, I mean, UConn, they just have to come out and get, get in a stance and not give up anything easy. Don't commit a foul. They just, this is when you got to trust your team and trust the work that you put in on the defensive end. Just don't give up an open shot. And if you're Georgetown, get good ball movement. And I would say, I mean, get it to Fauntleroy. But Ransom hasn't played well, but sh she's been their stud all year. So there's Fauntleroy who will inbound the basketball. UConn with Mule, 
Betancourt, Uhas, Edwards, and Griffin, the five on the floor for the Huskies. There's Ransom with the ball. Edwards on her on the switch. Both players hit the floor. And it's going to be a tied up basketball. It'll be Georgetown's on the alternating possession arrow. Was the floor wet is what I wonder, the way they both went down. Mm -hmm. Get the mop out and try and make sure it's not still. 22 seconds even to go. Gino, Gino told Aubrey to get off the ball. Oh, the inbound play blocked by Griffin. And those are the plays that Aubrey Griffin makes. The foul hard uh, after. And she grimaced, yeah, the way she got hit in the back. Watch this. A savvy play by Ransom, but then how about the recovery by Griffin? That's her athleticism for you. Wow. And all ball. And so Griffin fouled here hard by uh, Brianna Scott. Aubrey steps to the free throw line with 16 seconds to go in the game. See Gino, keep her hands off everybody. Don't commit a foul. 17 for Griffin and perfect from the free throw strike. Scott heaves one up long range. No. And that's going to get knocked out of bounds. It'll be Georgetown basketball. 6.3 left. And UConn leading by eight. Aubrey Griffin keeps grabbing her side or her back. From where she got fouled before. She reacted gingerly from, from that foul. Here's Fauntleroy, defended by Betancourt. Has to give it up, and Juhas will have the ball in her hands, and the time runs out on the Hoyas. Wonderful embrace between Gino Oriema and Jimmy Howard. Terrific effort by the Hoyas on their home court today. But in the end, UConn holds on and pulls away for an eight-point victory to uh, run their record against Georgetown now to 51-6, and six, and now 35 straight for the Huskies. 67-59 is your final from Washington. Player of the game, presented by CSCU, we have selected Aubrey Griffin for this one. I'll tell you what, she, she played so well in key moments of this game. Had a, a big block there at the end, made some critical free throws, scored when they needed it. Did a little bit of everything. Terrific effort from Griffin, and uh, again, those key free throws late, where she was a perfect 8-for-8 eight eight from the stripe. Helping, uh, helping the Huskies pull out a tough win, Maria. Coach, it was hard to generate offense today. How did you hold on to the win? <laughs> I have no idea. I mean, uh, you know, we made some big free throws when we had to. Uh, you know, we, you know, we, we, we just shoot ourselves in the foot so much, you know, like we can't afford to do that. But when we had, you know, that block by Aubrey was just unbelievable, right? And, um, you know, somehow, some way, we were able to just hang in there and, and get through it. But uh, uh, it wasn't easy by any stretch, as anybody watching could tell. You mentioned the big defensive play by Aubrey Griffin. She stepped up with 10 points in the second half. How valuable has she been? Well, that's the thing with Aubrey, you know? She can help you defensively when she's doing those things, and she can help you offensively when she's being aggressive. Um, and in the first half, she wasn't, you know, she wasn't aggressive and the second half she was and you say, well, why? I don't know, you know, so um, we need her to be like she was in the second half every game and um, she showed, you know, why, um, you know, and Dorka played great, you know, and we just, you know, it's just a, sh a struggle right now, but, you know, we survived another one. You did, and Dorka Juhas, 18 points, 16 rebounds. What about her effort? Well, you know, Dorka's been, she's been doing that all year for the most part, you know, and 
Georgetown's not an easy team to play against. Um, but, you know, Dork is a good ball handler. She goes and gets rebounds. She doesn't wait for them to come to her. Um, I, I just thought it was a great effort all the way around by her. Coach, thanks, and enjoy a few days off, will you? Thank you. Okay, Maria, Coach, thanks. So, uh, UConn runs its record in uh, the Big East to now 14-1, and 22-4 and four on the season. Even when things aren't going right like that, you make them right. That's how you pull out a win on the road. Aubrey Griffin with a nice play.